In this interview, we're going to meet Tom Erickson. Tom is an interaction designer and researcher, and he works for IBM. He works in the social computing group at Watson Lab in New York, and he's actually been working there since 97, and before that he worked nine years for Apple. So he is an expert on social computing, and this is what we're going to talk about today. So Tom, what is social computing? Sure, so uh, social computing uh, are systems that uh, support social behavior among people within the system and then make use of that behavior for various purposes. Uh, so, uh, and it can range from uh, systems that just make use of a few things. So like uh, take Amazon. Uh, you go to Amazon and they've, they have people write you know, reviews of books and then other people come along and as they read them they say I like this or I don't like this. Uh, and so there are two levels of, of social computing there. One is uh, simply uh, you can look at a book and you can see how many people liked it and how many people didn't and read their reviews and then you can also judge something about the quality of the reviews by seeing you know how many people thought this is a good reviewer or not and Amazon actually has done something I think that's quite nice which is one of the types of reviews they foreground is uh, the most liked critical review mm -hmm. that's a review where they didn't give it a top rating but a lot of people still uh, found it useful mm -hmm. uh, and and I always try to go right for right for that mm -hmm. uh, that review are there different kind or different uh, types of uh, social computing? Uh, yeah, um, so there, there are a couple of, of answers, answers to that. Uh, one has to do with how social computing surfaces in the system. So what I just described, Amazon, that uses a, a few social computing mechanisms in it, right? You could get rid of the reviews, you could get rid of the you know, liking or disliking ratings, uh, and Amazon would still be pretty much the same. It would be a place to go and, and buy books or, or, or other things. Uh, but uh, other types of systems are uh, don't just use social computing mechanisms, but they're fundamentally social computing things. So uh, take something like, you know, the canonical example is, is Wikipedia, uh, where, uh, you know, it's, it's all produced uh, by the contributors. So they produce the content, uh, they, you know, uh, edit it, uh, they assess quality, uh, so on and so forth. So, so that's sort of almost pure social computing in that it's all coming through users and it's all shaped by social interaction among users. Uh, another way to distinguish between types of social computing systems uh, is this is this is something I've 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 been puzzling over. I, I mostly like examples, and I I tend to avoid defining things formally. Mm -hmm. But one of the continuums that you can uh, look at social computing systems along has to uh, has to do with uh, the type of interactions that are happening in them. So in Wikipedia, for example, uh, the content that is being produced. Uh, or the knowledge that's being produced, or the wisdom of the crowd, if you if you like to think of it that way, uh, is coming uh, through uh, very uh, through conversational interaction, right? Uh, let's contra contrast that with another type of social computing system. Uh, one example I'm very fond of is uh, uh, is that of an online auction. Uh, so there you have something for sale. You have a, an audience of people who want it, uh, and uh, the way in what people do is they go in and they place a bid. And uh, you know, I bid for something, and then you, you see that somebody has bid so much for it and you want it more, so you bid a bit more. And so there, the interaction is very simple, right? You're simply placing a bid of a certain value. Uh, and, and those repeated interactions are, in a sense, a way of socially computing a price for something, right? And auctions are, are very useful things. So if, if you have a rare piece of art, you know, how do you figure out what that costs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the answer is you let, you let people socially figure it out. Mm -hmm.
We often hear the term social media. Uh, can you tell us, in your opinion, what is the difference between social media and social computing? Uh, that's that's a hard one. Uh, I, I see social computing as, as a very general term. Uh, I mean, the way I think about social computing is, is I think, think of groups of people uh, who are actually collectively computing something, where I mean computing fairly broadly. It might be figuring out the price for something like you do in the auction. Uh, it might be uh, composing an encyclopedia article as you do in, in Wikipedia, but in, in some sense, at a very general level, uh, that's all a computation, right? Uh, or a market uh, is, is another type of computation. We all collectively, you know, uh, place bids for things uh, and, you know, that, that shapes you know, the, the price of commodities or, or whatever it is you're, you're buying and selling. Uh, so, Computing, I think, covers a large range of, of territory where, so in a market, uh, we're anonymous to one another, right? Uh, and that's actually important because we don't want people conspiring to, mm -hmm. you know, to, to fix the market or we don't, you know, they don't want us uh, uh, conspiring to, you know, all, all bid, uh, uh, I think I think they call them shills in auction, where you you insert people who were uh, false bidders mm, to yeah. sort of drive the price up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so in social computing systems, you might have cases where people are interacting a lot, very deeply, getting to know one another, like in Wikipedia, or you might have a very uh, almost anonymous type of interaction where all I know about you is that you've just outbid me, uh, and how am I going to react to that? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think social media, uh, the way I think of the term, has to do with people uh, actually having uh, a rich communication among them, right? So uh, Wikipedia, it's not all social media, but for example, the talk pages uh, yeah. are, are clearly social media, whereas uh, an eBay auction, uh, I wouldn't call that social mm, media. Okay. So it's actually a scale and you can say it's more or less social. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you can imagine that, you know, you could take an online auction system. I uh, don't know to what extent eBay does this. I haven't looked at it in a, in a while. But you can, uh, you know, imagine uh, creating some kind of online community of customers who are, say, uh, interested in, uh, you know, some type of art that they collect uh, through eBay. And so you might have a little place where there's, you know, very rich social interaction, that would be social media, mm -hmm. but then you have other niches, the auction where people go in and they're anonymous and all you do is bid, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you can compose all these different things together depending on the type of interaction you want to support. Yeah. Can you, can you pick out one main goal of social computing? Well, for me, the main goal is in face-to-face -face situations, uh, at least in, in the ones that, that work well, they're interesting. They have a life to them. They give a bit of energy. They have some spontaneity. Uh, to me, they're you know, a, a good face-to-face -face situation where you're with people and things are happening is just energizing and, and, and alive. And you know, it's, it's, I think, something that's very fundamentally human, right? At the base, we're social creatures and we get something from that interaction. And so I guess when I think of the sort of primary goal for social computing, it's to create online places or applications or even services, call them what you may, that have some of that life to them that, you know, is fundamental to being human. Can you give us some examples of some of the methods and theories you use to approach this goal? Let's start with uh, the theory. Uh, I draw on, on a couple areas of theory. Uh, one is actually for a couple of decades I've been very interested in uh, urban design and then also there's uh, a body of anthropology that studies behavior in, in uh, public places. Uh, so uh, perhaps the, the best, uh, most famous example of this is William White. Uh, who wrote a couple of books uh, 
one called The Social Life of Small Urban Spaces, and then a larger book that includes that actually called City, Return to the Center. And uh, White looked very closely uh, at how people interacted in public spaces. Uh, and uh, he observed a lot of interesting things that I, ha I think have direct applicability to, to online systems. So one thing he talked about he called uh, triangulation. And uh, by triangulation, uh, what he meant is uh, something would happen in a public space that would cause two people who didn't know one another to start talking, right? So uh, it might be walking down the street and seeing a juggler uh, or uh, somebody uh, walking a new puppy down the street. That, that often gets people to stop and, oh, what a nice puppy, mm -hmm. and, and there's a focus for the interaction and there's a reason for people to approach and, and begin talking. Uh, so uh, that's, that's one example of, of that type of work. Um, in addition to, so, there's, so urban designers think a lot about how to structure spaces uh, uh, so that they can support that kind of interaction. There's uh, a Danish architect by the name of uh, Jan Gell uh, who has a book called Life Between Buildings. Uh, and he has some very interesting ways of thinking about public space. Uh, he des de uh, designed things and he thinks about things in terms of interactive radiuses. Uh, so he talks about uh, how far, he, he talks about a radius, he, he, he says, if you're within this distance, let's say it's 50 meters, I don't remember what his, his numbers are, uh, you'll be able to uh, notice somebody that you weren't expecting to see but you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go into a place looking for somebody whom you expect to know, uh, well you can see them at a longer distance, maybe you know 150 meters. And, and so he, he looks at spaces in terms of the types of interactions they might support and how close you would have to be to get that interaction. So that's another interesting way of, of thinking about designing well, either face-to-face -face situations or, or online uh, spaces, which is uh, what do you have to provide to make a particular type of interaction mm -hmm. possible. And in urban settings, what you want is you want a space to afford many different types of interactions, right? So uh, uh, a good public square, for example, uh, has places where uh, people can meet one another. Right. I'll meet you by the big clock, or I'll meet you by the statue of so and so. Mm -hmm. uh, can you translate that to a social computing system? A, a very good question. Uh, often you can't, mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, you might well want to. So certainly there are three D online environments like Second Life, right? So uh, now we could say, let's go into Second Life, and here is you know the. Uh, uh, Second Life URL that, that we can meet at, or you know, if we know the environment, yes, meet by the you know, upside down purple pyramid. Uh, so that's one thing. To go farther back in history, uh, l looking at things like uh, IRC, right? So you could, uh, you could uh, agree to meet somebody in a particular IRC channel at a particular time. So you, you can do that, uh, or an online community where you have, you know, uh, general uh, conferences and within conferences you have topics, right? Uh, oh, let's go and talk in this topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if we take a step back, how did research into social computing start? Are you, are you asking about the field in general? or Yeah, the yeah. field in general. Well, I would trace it back to uh, I guess the study of online communities. I mean, social computing—you know—social computing is a relatively recent term. I, I don't know exactly when it started, but you know, certainly not uh, as as a name that people used commonly before the the late '90s at, at the earliest. Uh, but you know, social computing in the sense that uh, you have systems that are trying to support social behavior among their users uh, and to make that behavior either produce useful things or make it useful on its own, uh, that certainly goes, goes way back to online communities. I think uh, uh, the, the earliest uh, 
online community. Back then they called it computer conferencing, was uh, Murray Turoff's uh, system used in the US in the 70s. Uh, and that was a private system actually used to administer the US wage and price control freeze of the Nixon era. Uh, so that, pr that probably was not social computing, that was just a bunch of uh, policy uh, people trying to sort of regulate things. But not long a after that you saw the emergence of, of more public online communities. Uh, I don't think I can pull the history out of my head, but uh, there were some early chat communities. Uh, Turoff went on and built a system called Eyes at the New, New Jersey Institute of Technology. There was a system called Planet uh, by folks at the Institute for the Future in Palo Alto. There was something at Michigan. So, so back in uh, late 70s, uh, early 80s, there were a lot of online communities uh, emerging and uh, I, I, certainly that's where you can see the beginning of, of what I'd call social computing research because you have lots of people, they're interacting and you're trying to understand mm -hmm. what on earth is going on and you start to see the beginnings of of people self-organizing, or people, uh, uh, or self-organizations fragmenting. So you have the emergence of flaming, mm -hmm. right, and uh, uh, you know various types of, of cyber vandalism where people are are sort of working counter to online order. Uh, so I, I think it all goes goes back to that at that era. Thank you so much, Tom, for sharing some of your knowledge and perspectives on social computing. It's been very interesting. You're most welcome. It's a great pleasure. Thanks. If you want to know more about how to put these insights into use when you're actually designing interactive products, you should have a look at our second interview with Tom. You could also take a look at the chapter he's written at interactiondesign.org and you could also find other videos and other chapters written by other thought leaders and inventors. Thanks for watching.